my expedition. Oh, she that might have intercepted thee by strangling thee in her accursed womb from all the slaughters wretch that thou hast done. Tell me, thou villain slave, where are my children? Thou toad, thou toad. Where is thy brother, Clarence? <laughs> a flourish, trumpets, strike alarm, drums. Let not the heavens hear these telltale women rail on the Lord's anointed. Strike, I say! <laughs> I, I thank God, my father, and yourself. Then patiently hear my impatience. Madam, I have a touch of your condition which cannot brook the accent of reproof. I will be mild and gentle in my speech. And uh, brief, good mother, for I am in haste. How thou so hasty? I have stayed for thee, God knows, in anguish, pain, and agony. And came I not at last to comfort you? No, by the holy rood. Thou knowest it well. Thou camest on earth to make the earth my hell. If I be so disgracious in your sight, let me march on and not offend your grace. Strike up the drum. I prithee but one word. For I shall never speak to thee again. Either thou wilt die by God's just ordinance, ere from this war thou turn a conqueror, or I, with grief and extreme age, shall perish and never look upon thy face again. Therefore take with thee my most heavy curse, which in the day of battle Tire thee more than all the complete armor that thou wearest. Bloody thou art. Bloody shall be thy end. Shame serves thy life, and doth thy death attend. Though far more cause, yet much less spirit to curse abides in me. I say amen to all. Say, madam. I would speak a word with you. The queen and I must have some conference touching affairs of state. The rest depart. Now, madam, listen to me. What good thou in me? I have no more sons of the royal blood for thee to murder. Thou dost me wrong. For I intend more good to you and yours than ever you or yours were by me wronged. Even all I have, yea, and myself and all, mean I to endow with all a child of thine. You have a daughter called Elizabeth, virtuous and fair, royal and gracious. And must she die for this? Oh, let her live. Nay. Know that from my soul I love thy daughter and mean to make her queen of England. So then who dost thou mean shall be her king? Even he that makes her queen, who should be her What's that? I? Even I. How canst thou woo her? That would I learn of you. And wilt thou learn of me? I done with all my heart. Send to her by the man that slew her brothers, a pair of bleeding hearts. Thereon engrave Edward and York. Then happily she will weep. <laughs> come, come, thou mocks me. This is not the way to win your daughter. There is no other way. Say I did all this for love of her. Nay, then indeed she cannot choose but hate thee, having bought love with such a bloody spot. Look, what is done cannot be now amended. Men shall deal unadvisedly sometimes which after hours gives leisure to repent. If I have killed the issue of your womb to quicken your increase, I will beget mine issue of your blood upon your daughter. Your children were vexation to your youth, but mine shall be a comfort to your age. But I cannot make you what amends I would, therefore accept such kindness as I can. But we have many goodly days to see. Go then. My mother? <sighs> to your daughter go. Put in her tender heart the aspiring flame of golden sovereignty. Acquaint the princess with the sweet, silent hours of marriage joys. And when this arm of mine hath 
chastiser, the petty rebel, dull brain Buckingham. Bound with triumphant garlands will I come and lead thy daughter to a conqueror's bed. What were I best to say? Her father's brother would be her lord, or shall I say, her uncle. Under what title shall I woo for thee? For fair England's peace, by this alliance. Which she shall purchase with still lasting war. Uh, say I shall love her everlastingly. But how long shall that title ever last? Sweetly enforce until her fair life's end. But how long fairly should her sweet life last? So long as heaven and nature lengthens it. So long as hell and Richard likes of it. Now by my jaws, my garter and my crown. Profaned, dishonored, and a fair desert. Now by the world. It is full of thy foul wrongs. My father's death. Thy life hath that dishonor. Then by myself. Thyself, thyself misuses. Why then, by God? God's wrong is most of all. If thou hadst feared to break an oath by him, the imperial metal circling now thy brow had graced the tender temples of my child. And both the princes had been breathing here, which now, two tender playfellows for dust, thy broken faith hath made a prey for worms. <laughs> As I intend to prosper and repent, I vow to thee that with my pure heart's love, immaculate devotion, holy thoughts, I tender now thy beauteous princely daughter. In her consists my happiness and thine. Without her follows to this land a me, to thee, herself, and many a Christian soul, sad desolation. Ruin and decay it cannot be avoided but by this. It will not be avoided but by this. But I be tempted of the devil. What? Aye, the devil tempted to do good. But thou didn't kill my children. But in thy daughter's womb, I'll bury them. Where in that nest of spicery they shall breathe selves of themselves to your recomfiture. Should I go with my daughter to thy will? Be a happy mother by the deed. I go. Write to me very shortly and you shall understand from me her mind. There are my true love's kiss. So farewell. Relenting fool and shallow changing woman. <laughs> <laughs> 